didn't. Tobin was talking about. She, uh, I'm beside at the property. Look at my dad today. A hundred million views. This is going to be the best video. Please, guys, give this video a hundred million views. There's the grandbaby. I get to the nerd catch. Okay, then again, well, this time, do it good. 
Welcome back to AZ Off Grid, you guys. All right, today is September 6, 2021. It is Labor Day. I hope you guys are having a good one. Had the family up here. Um, yeah, my wife, my little boy, six-year-old Aaron, um, and my daughter, my son-in-law, and my granddaughter. She's four months old. Beautiful little girl. Um, yeah, I had them all up here for a couple of days. It was pretty fun. Um, everybody had a good time. The weather's been pretty pretty nice. A little warm. But uh, other than that, it's been beautiful. They just left a little while ago. And now it's time for me to get some work done. So I'm going to stay till tomorrow. Um, I need to use my little Harbor Freight utility trailer but it's been out of commission for a little while let's take you over there and show you what we're doing um, I haven't used it in a while so one of the tires has a slow leak and it has gone completely flat and off the bead and I'm unable to air it up because it's off the bead so I'm using a technique that I've seen before, use a ratchet strap, uh, crank down around the center of the tire, which forces the, uh, the bead of the tire to press against the rim, um, and able to, uh, in order to try to create a somewhat of an airtight seal, enough to build up a little bit of pressure in there, um, to where it'll hold air. I tried squeezing the tire many different ways while I was trying to air it up and it just wasn't happening. So I'm going to try this. Hopefully this works. It, it's definitely much tighter against the bead of the rim than it was when I was trying to air it up without the strap. So I'm not going to use ether or gas or any of that kind of stuff. That's just, uh, that's just not something I do, especially on a small tire like this. So, um, yeah, so. I got my kids little little Jeep work running. Um, these come with a, a small battery that fits under the seat here. Um, there's a second seat that goes here. Those batteries aren't that great. They, they don't have very long run time on them. And they're pretty damn expensive if you want to replace them. So what I did was I went ahead and just bought a, a tractor battery at Cal Ranch. It's a uh, it's got more uh, amp hour capacity than the little battery that comes in this thing and it's far cheaper to purchase and I just recharge it whenever it's low it's already fully charged and uh, my kid was riding this thing all over the place out here all over the place and it never went dead on him 
and when I when I hooked it up this morning after he rode it for I don't know an hour or two over uh, yesterday and today it was down to 12.5 volts which is not even a dead battery or a low battery so um, I think that's gonna work out pretty good it sucks I mean it limits to only one seat and you got to be careful I have it strapped down right here you can't see it I've got tape around it so he didn't cut himself but I have a, uh, a very large hose clamp that I cut and anchored here and over here and uh, just tighten it up right here but uh, yeah I just got to keep these uh, these uh, terminals covered <laughs> this is temporary <coughs> I just that's all I had at the time but keep them protected so nothing touches those, those two points and creates a short but other than that it works great it works great so anyways um, yeah so we are uh, people have asked me before can you run a, a air compressor off of your solar and I absolutely can this is an eight gallon I don't know if you can read that 135 psi blah 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 um, yeah it's a husky from Home Depot and no problem running it off the uh, solar out here so it's already up to I think I don't know 60 psi I'm gonna let it go a little more in case I have a little trouble getting some air in that tire Fifty, let's see, yeah, eighty-five psi. So that's about all I'm going to put in there right now. Anyways, um, everything's been good though. Uh, wife loves the sink. Um, she did the dishes, which I appreciate, dear. Uh, we've been using off of this water last couple of days. Water's right here, a little over half still. I, I can't tell you the last time I filled this. Um, I don't know when it was, maybe in March? I don't remember. But it's working very well. Um, no issues, we've been using it all weekend, so. Um, yeah, everybody was pretty impressed with the shower that I did in here. It's a little dark in here, guys. But they like the shower. Just got a couple more things to do to finish this off, including some kind of door for privacy. Um, I got some stuff to clean up out here, obviously, since uh, everybody was out here. We were having a good time. Um, wife and some of the kiddos were doing the uh, shooting arrows and throwing, throwing knives into the stumps, stuff like that. And uh, son-in-law learned how to, hey, stop eating grass over there, crazy. Son-in-law learned how to ride the quad there. He picked up the uh, shifting real quick. It didn't take him long to figure it out. Um, yeah, he and my daughter were out riding around, having a good time. So that's what it's all about up here. Just coming up here, relaxing, having a good time forgetting about all the BS that's going on in the real world, right? <laughs> so, anyways, I'm going to I'm going to get over there and try to air up that tire. We'll see if we can get it done. All right, guys, let's see if this works. Ha ha! It's building pressure immediately. I love it. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's the point where I want to release the strap now, if I can. It's on there pretty tight. Alright. Woo! <laughs> that popped out real quick. Alright. There it is, holding air. Sweet. Check that out, guys. Nice. Yeah, that worked. Pretty good, actually. All right. <coughs> so, ratchet strap on a tire that's completely off the bead. It's, well, a small tire like this at least, it certainly works. I don't know if you, you could use a small ratchet strap like this on an actual like pickup truck tire. I don't know if you'd have enough, uh, be able to crank it down tight enough to really manipulate a big tire like that, but this for sure, no problem. Um, probably could do it on a quad also. Ah, oh, good, I can use my trailer. <laughs> I'm trying to dig a deep hole. And I've come up against a large rock in the hole, the kids' toys. Um, i come up against a large rock in the hole. It's time to use a generator and my little, uh, it's a small jackhammer is what it is. Chipper jackhammer. I'm going to use that to break the rock up so I can keep, keep digging. So... That's what we're working on right now. Did put up the shade cloth yesterday. Um, we were out here sitting underneath it for a bit, probably an hour or two. Um, working very well. So again, thank you, John at Frugal Off Grid. Um, yeah, I definitely enjoy having some shade around here other than being inside where it gets a little warm. So, very cool. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> so while I've been gone for the last two weeks I've noticed that I haven't been able to really view my surveillance while I'm gone it's, I can get the videos to pop up it takes probably about 10 minutes for them to just populate in the app but when I try to watch the video it's, it's so laggy I can't even really see what's going on um, so when I got up here the other day it turns out my Wii Boost cell phone signal booster has died. It is dead. Zero power to it. I'm not sure if it's the power supply or the little modem itself, but it is no longer currently working. So, kind of a bummer. Um, I don't know if you're loud. If you're loud, I don't know if you're supposed to leave those on uh, constantly. Mine's been on running nonstop for, I don't know, the last, I guess it's been about three years now. Um, so, I don't know if they're only for intermittent use or constant. Um, while it's running, after it's been on for a few minutes, <coughs> you can feel it if you put your hand on it. It's pretty dang, pretty dang warm. Um, a lot of heat build up inside that thing but it doesn't draw much power just just a, I don't know 10 15 watts maybe but a lot of heat builds up inside that little wee boost uh, modem or whatever it is so I don't know if the just over over time being in an a non air conditioned environment that it just got too hot over time and just wore out some of the uh, components on the circuit board inside I haven't even opened it up yet, but uh, either way, it's not working. So I have zero internet here, zero cell service here. I mean, nothing. We tried, <laughs> tried and tried to even get a text out here earlier or yesterday. He could not do it. So that right there tells you how well or how much needed a signal booster is out here. And they certainly have a purpose. Um, so I'm going to 
I'm gonna take the one I have here, the broken one. I'm gonna take it home. I'm gonna open it up, see if there's anything obvious inside. And I'll test the power supply, see if it's still providing power to the unit. Because um, I'd, I'd rather not have to buy another one. I mean, it, it's kind of old, and they, they have uh, WeBoost, Wilson Electronics. They've got better ones out now. But they're pretty darn expensive. Three, four hundred dollars, you know, maybe five hundred dollars. It's a lot of money, but it, it's something that I need up here. I really do to continue doing things the way I have been up here. So hopefully I can open it up and find something wrong with it, easy to fix. Maybe it's just a power supply. I gotta buy a new power supply. No big deal, that shouldn't cost too much. But if not, if, uh, if it's something I can't troubleshoot and fix right away, I'm gonna have to buy another one, unfortunately. So that's a... That's a hefty bill right there. And if I'm gonna buy another one, I'm just gonna buy a, a probably a better one. Um, same same company, obviously, I like their products. Just uh, wish they lasted more than three years. But um, that's just in my situation, you know, it gets where it's sitting, it's, it was in the trailer, now it's inside the, the tiny cabin. And you know, it's uh, when I'm not here, everything's closed up, it gets pretty darn hot in there. It gets, you know, 105, 110 degrees in there in the, in the in the height of the summer heat inside the building. So um, they probably probably would last longer if it was like in your home in an air conditioned environment where it doesn't get above 80 degrees, you know, most of the time. But so that's just my use case experience here. Uh, birds are going crazy. I, uh, they were waiting for me to feed them when I got here and as soon as I did one bird just one bird Came over and he started taking seed back to his wherever his home is back that way and once he got his fill his or her fill of uh, seed That is when it started calling out to the other birds It wouldn't it wouldn't make a sound until it got all the, the seed it wanted and then once it did it started calling out to the other birds and in they came in, in droves. So, kind of interesting how that all works out. <laughs> they, uh, they communicate with one another and they're, they're strate strategic, you know, they, they get what they need first and then once they got what they need, then they let the rest of the group know that there's food here. So, yeah, they're just waiting, waiting for me. I've seen them fly around and sit and kind of watch the area. And then I filled them up yesterday, and uh, in in they came. So um, it hasn't been very windy here, which has been nice, very nice. This in fact, this is the most wind we've had <laughs> probably in the last three days. That thing hasn't even spun since I've been here until now. So kind of funny. I start recording and the wind picks up. But yeah, I got some cleanup to do. I gotta move some of this stuff, put the stuff away. Now that they've gone, put the bike away. Some of the chairs. And I've got some work to do around here. But uh, yeah, it's just been a beautiful couple of days. I was glad to have the family up. Finally get my daughter up here. She, uh, she doesn't like coming up here too much. It's never really been her thing. But there were a couple of moments while she was here. Brief moments. That I saw her slip expressions of happiness. <laughs> she was trying hard not to show it, but I saw it. So, haha, -ha, caught you. Anyways, uh, my son-in-law, he, he liked it up here a lot. He, this is his kind of thing. Um, I think he and I share similar interests in what makes us happy. So, yeah, he had a good time up here. He enjoyed all the beautiful green, all the trees, just the serenity here. He had a good time. So, I thought that was pretty cool. And, of course, my trusty helper is laying down underneath the cabin there. Hey, dog. Sorry. It's the coolest spot on the ranch right there, underneath the building. Oh yeah, 
the uh, trees over here still doing very well still doing very well um, it's just beautifully green healthy looking I've been getting munched on by some kind of insects I don't know but they're alive and believe it or not the water from my sink drain over here after washing dishes and whatnot I just pour them in there and it's not killing the trees it's not hurting them anything I help I think it's made them greener but yeah oh yeah um, let's check out the uh, the mullen <laughs> mullen it's going crazy it is definitely growing as you can see yep all over the place all over the place so in the last video I talked about uh, <laughs> I guess uh, myths and legends or tales of mullen and their use by the natives and I said that uh, I had heard that the natives would use mullen for many things because it does have uh, different properties and serves different purposes and I said uh, one of them I said was uh, I heard they had used the leaves to uh, to go to the bathroom if you know what I mean to wipe turns out and I don't know this to be fact because I haven't actually researched it but one of my subscribers commented and said hey that's a <laughs> that's a BS story that the natives use to uh, get back at the white man apparently the little the little fibers that make the leaves so soft according to the subscriber they come loose if you use them on sensitive skin and get lodged in said sensitive skin and becomes very irritating so take that for what it is do your own research before you attempt to use mullen to uh, clean sensitive areas on your body it, it may in fact leave small fibers embedded in your skin and cause quite a bit of irritation I don't know but that's what I was told so take it for what it is um, solar's been doing good I had to run the generator the other night um, when we got here we got here kind of late the sun had already passed over that way was no longer producing power on the panels and the refrigerator inside here the, the full size refrigerator that I that I use it was pretty hot inside there and when I kicked it on it took several several hours to cool down but uh, that constant draw on my batteries along with everything else we were using here including the TV lights um, maybe even the microwave it drew the batteries down to about 12.2 volts so I threw the generator on got them back up and then everything's been pretty good since then once the fridge got down to temperature and we opened up some windows in here um, it didn't have to run very much to keep all of our food nice and cold and frozen so oh, yeah so alright guys I'm gonna get off here I'm gonna get some work done and uh, I'll probably get back with you guys later. So, all right, guys, take care, and we'll see you in a little while. Okay, guys, so I spent most of the day, probably half the day, probably, um, trying to dig this dang hole. It's kicking my butt. I'm going to take you over and show you where it is here. Ah. Uh, this land is tough digging out here. All right, so let's turn you around. So for reference, my camp is out that way. There's the wind turbine. I don't think I've ever taken you guys over here before, but uh, this is what I've got going. Got my little break area here. 
but uh, digging a hole uh, it probably doesn't show well on camera but it's about three feet deep and just over two feet um, in diameter but as you can see it is solid rock down there we're just pulling out rock it's all volcanic rock Oh, it's just ancient like lava flow. I don't know how well you can see that. But yeah. Just uh ancient ancient lava flow. Good morning. Sorry about that guys. I didn't realize that uh my SD card was pretty much full <laughs> so um, yeah it got kind of late when I was transferring files off my SD card onto the uh, onto my computer so um, it's the next day it's around 1 p.m. it's pretty warm it's probably about 88 degrees out here um, this trip's gonna be mostly an R&R &R trip I didn't get a whole lot done uh, as I was getting to yesterday afternoon, I did uh, spend probably half the day working on this hole. Um, so, let's just say for the purposes of this video, this hole is for composting. Okay? Um, this is not the first hole I've dug out here. I've dug many holes, some for planting trees and others for composting. Okay, um, sorry for whipping you guys around there. You have to cover your holes out here when you dig them if you're not uh, ready to do whatever you're gonna do with them because we have cattle that roam the ranch out here and if one was to fall in there, um, I'm responsible for the injury or death of said cattle. So, always make sure to cover your holes when you're digging holes. Um, yeah, so I don't know if you can see, you could, I can see it clearly. There's about two feet of dirt mixed with rock, and then it's just solid rock beyond that. So, every place that I've dug a hole out here, and it doesn't seem to matter where, where I dig, um that's what happens you dig down a couple of feet and you hit solid a solid bed of rock um there is only one place that i have found so far where you can go down eight feet without hitting rock and that is right over there by my power room where i drove in um my ground rod i was able to drive it all the way down eight feet without hitting rock so that is the only place I have found <laughs> where I, I don't hit uh, hit rock within about two or three feet so I don't know how much deeper I'm gonna go with this I mean I'm just chipping rock out with my little whatever heck you want to call it rotary hammer it's not even a rotary hammer mini jackhammer um, I'm just busting rock out so it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's a lot of rocks taking a lot of a lot of work so but I'm not gonna do anything else with it today I'm gonna cover the hole with this pallet so nothing falls in while I'm gone and I'm gonna clean up um, I've actually got quite a bit of cleanup to do and I'm gonna get out of here because um, I have to work tomorrow so and uh, it's already getting kind of late in the day so something else I probably haven't showed you guys before I don't know what the, the actual name of these bushes is but uh, we just call them scrub oak they're a little like a little oak bush it's kind of weird they look just like an oak tree branch but they grow in, in, in like a bush they don't grow very big or very fast but uh, they're scattered all, all around the ranch here. And then you've got these little guys that hide and you can't see them until you're right on top of them. But 
there's a great example of pine trees growing through juniper trees right through the base of the tree and there's a pine tree it's just growing right up out of the juniper <laughs> and it's about I don't know nine nine ten feet tall so it's protected by the juniper so the elk deer and cattle don't eat it they have a hard time getting in there and munching on those trees I think that's why you never really see them out on their own much because uh, the wildlife just eat them up as soon as they germinate and sprout but when they're when they're in a tree like this it's hard for the animals to get at them and they're allowed to grow so all right did not need to use the generator last night um, I was up until uh, about 3 4 a.m. Sorry if it's a little, uh, you're getting some wind noise on this camera right here. I'm using my GoPro right now, and I turned the wind mode off because it makes this the audio, uh, you probably noticed it earlier in the video, like this weird reverb or echo kind of sound. And I really don't like it. Um, I do have the new uh, GoPro um, Wireless Go, I think it's called. Uh, wireless mics that I'm going to hook up to this. I just had to buy the adapter for the GoPro. So we'll get that uh, hooked up on the next video. But I was up till about 4 a.m. But right around 3 a.m. I started hearing a large pack of coyotes right over that way. Just yipping and yapping. So that's the only real signs of wildlife I've seen since I've been up here on this trip. Other than a couple of rabbits. But, yeah, um, what else? Yeah, solar was working great. So I was up watching TV till about 4 a.m. Um, had the fan on in there. Uh, my alarm never came on for the uh, low battery warning. And we are up to 14.1 volts in absorb mode. We've got a total of 4.1 kilowatt hours so far today. Um, so yeah, even after all these years, five, five years, six years, my, uh, my batteries are still hanging in there, even though I've, uh, I've mistreated them <laughs> many times. Um, I have not been good to those batteries. I've not, uh, maintained them properly. I've let the water get down far too low to the point that the uh, lead plates are showing and you're not supposed to do that but I'm kind of lazy when it comes to battery maintenance but uh, yeah and I've got them I have, I've had them to the point where I I, I uh, let's see discharge them so low and the bat the water level was so low that I had a hard time getting them to charge again but I filled them back up with water and I hit them hard uh, charge them real hard over a course of a couple of days and they seem to come back so they are working just fine right now um, something else interesting so I told you yesterday that my my Wii Boost cell phone signal booster I'll show you it's kind of a mess in here guys it's kind of under construction but oh where is it where did I put it oh still connected anyways you can't see it, it's a little dark in here but this thing I've had for I don't know three years but it's dead it's off no power all that good stuff it's not even plugged in right now no no point but um, I was able to get signal to my Verizon jetpack in the trailer Somehow, not sure how, and I was able to get online just a little bit and then stream a little bit of, a little bit of low quality Netflix. So it's grabbing signal from around here somewhere somehow, enough for me to uh, get online a little bit and to watch some uh, low res TV. 
but um, yeah, so need I need to figure out a solution to my cell phone signal. Either fix that one if I can, or buy a new one. So um, <coughs> I'm still waiting on Starlink. I forget how long ago it was I put in the uh, pre-order for it. Maybe February or March. I don't remember. <coughs> but I haven't been contacted by Starlink yet. There's no way for you, or at least that I have found, that I can contact Starlink myself to inquire as to when it will be available to me. Um, when you go on the website, you know, you log in, create a user account. There's no way to send them an email or a phone call that I can find. They're just supposed to contact you when it's ready. Well, the issue I have is there's another couple or family on the ranch here who has already gotten their Starlink satellite dish system. And I'm wondering why I haven't uh, been contacted yet. And that was about three, four weeks ago they got it. So, what's up Starlink? What's going on? Anyways. Yeah, I got a bit of stuff to clean up here. Um, p -p 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 yeah, a lot of stuff to put up and then I'm going to get out of here. Real quick though, I want to talk about the uh, the mint essential oil that I've been using to keep the mice at bay in my trailer. And I've had some pretty good success with it. So that, that's the first time I used it was uh, um, what two weeks ago when I was up here, and I had five little tea light trays little little candle metal candle things you know pull the candle out and pour the uh, extract in there and just five of them place them in different places around the trailer and I will say it did work um, so I had one on the table I had one on each nightstand on either side of my bed one behind the stove and one on the counter um, and there was no evidence of mice in those areas when I got here so they love the counter they love the stove and they love the table for whatever reason and I know they've been there because I find their poop every time I come back here but there was none when I got here there was some in a couple other places that were further away from the the, the mint extract so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, a few more. I think we we'll do like five more. Just really get it nice and potent in there, and hopefully that'll keep them. I'd I'd like to just run them out of the trailer. <laughs> so I have not put any in the ceiling yet or in the wall. I probably should, but I haven't. But I'm gonna take you inside and show you what I do with this stuff and how I do it and how I place it, just so you guys can kind of kind of get an idea. All right, so hang tight a second. All right, so I don't know how well you can see this. This is on the table inside my trailer, but here is the uh, the uh, peppermint extract, the essential oils. That's what it looks like. This is a 16 fluid ounce bottle. Got it on Amazon. Again, I'm gonna leave links to everything in the description below the video. Okay, so make sure you go ahead and check out the uh, the links below the video if you're interested in seeing what I have down there and what I use out here this is one of them so what I'm gonna do this stuff is really oily like it's, it's an oil really so my wife gave me this it's one of our kids medicine deals we have an extra one um, yeah so the last time I did it I just poured it directly into these these little tea light this is what they are, little tea light candles you buy anywhere. I just grabbed this, the, uh, man, the lighting on this video sucks. Sorry, guys. That doesn't help. Anyways, just pull the candle out like that. And perfect little thing to put some oil in. So, um, I just use this little plastic syringe. Because I was pouring it into these and I was making a mess. It was getting all over the place. So I'm just going to do it like this. Hopefully it'll be a little cleaner. 
Maybe not. Maybe I'll shoot it all over the place. We'll see. Whoop. Shoot. I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> oh, that's some strong stuff, though, man. You, uh, nope, this ain't going to work. <laughs> oh, dang it. All right, guys. This is a how not to do this. This is not going to work. It just shoots out. There's no way to do it do it gently all right well I guess we're gonna do it the old-fashioned way it just it it does not pour out easily so I'm gonna do two on the table here and I'm getting it all over my hands man I really hoped that was gonna work <laughs> uh, This is just a big old oily mess. Anyways, you guys get the idea. This is what I'm doing. Using these little tea light candle tins. And I'm placing them in different places around the trailer. And I will say, like this is an older one from two weeks ago. It still has, I don't know if you can see it, it still has oil in it. Whew. Yeah, it stinks. Well, it smells like mint. I don't like mint. Um, so, it does evaporate, but it's been two weeks, a little over two weeks, and it's still in there. Some of it is anyways. So, here's another one from two weeks ago. It is about half full. But, yeah, it does seem to be working. I gotta say, it's the least amount of uh, evidence of mice that I've seen here in several years. And it's gotta be because of this stuff. It is pretty strong when you got a lot of it out here. Uh, since I've been here the last few days though, I've kind of gotten used to it. I don't really smell it right now. Until you stick your nose right up to it. Of course, my sense of smell isn't the greatest anyways. But, I believe it is working. And like I said, there will be links in the description for this and everything else that I do out here that I can think of to put down in the description for you guys. Alright, I think I'm getting the hang of this. I'm not making that much of a mess now. Oh, yeah, that stuff is strong. Just give these a little little wiggle sometimes they come out and sometimes it pulls the wick out instead come on this one's ri ah, pulled the wick out anyways you guys get the idea that's what we're doing and clearly you can see I've made a mess here so I'm gonna have to clean that up let's take you back outside real quick Okay guys, so I think that's gonna do it for this one. I've got a lot of cleanup to do. And I got a long drive back home. I'm not sure when I'll be back up here. I do have the, uh, I ordered a fantastic fan for the trailer to replace the one that I have. The fan still works, it's just the lid has dried out and cracked and bird punched a hole in it so I need to replace that um, so this uh, shade cloth and this lens is pretty dirty Whew. shade cloth has been up the whole weekend that I've been here It is sagging a little bit. I think it's just stretching with the heat and the wind. But there's no signs of weakness in it or stressing that I can see. Like it's going to tear. So I think it's doing a pretty good job. I just have to adjust it from time to time. Pull out the slack. And uh, let's see. 
it's doing its job. I mean, it's it's nice under here. This is this is not hot at all. Normally, this would be really hot. So, anyways, um, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. So, um, make sure you guys uh, go ahead and check out the description below the video if you're interested in any of the uh, the links, the different products I've used. I will go ahead and put a link to the uh, the updated WeBoost cell phone signal booster that I will buy if I can't get this one working. I'll put that down in the description too. Um, like I said, they are they are very uh, useful, especially in a place like this where there's really no cell service. So um, even if they only last a few years, it's it's necessary. So um, that's about it. So you guys take care. Have a great day. Uh, be safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So one more thing guys, I was on my way off the ranch, there's a guy that lives out there, an older gentleman, he's very useful, um, helps a lot of people out. I usually stop by his place whenever I go in and out, and on my way out, I, t I told him that uh, my signal booster died, and he said he had a spare one, an older one, same exact model that I have, he had upgraded to the newer one, and he... Uh, he pulled the box out and I took mine because I have it with me here I took mine and I plugged it into his power supply and it came right to life so it looks like just my power supply failed um, and if that's the case that's a that's a pretty cheap fix um, super super stoked about that um, I know the next one up is like 500 bucks the next model up so right now I'm just gonna buy a new power supply and we're gonna try to see if that'll work right now I'm heading into town on my way back home but uh, it's hard to see from this angle especially through my windows but my property right out there I don't know if you can see the mountains back there but my property is right over there um, actually just to the right of that that uh, mountain right over there about 10 miles away so we're about into town and then I'm gonna hit the freeway and I got about another five hours to go so all right guys, so good news, uh, hopefully that's all it is. Uh, get a new power supply, plug it in. Weird thing was when I put, plugged this power supply in <laughs> with, no, with no cables hooked up to it for the antenna, um, all four green lights came on. I don't think that's supposed to happen. So, should all be red, I believe. I could be wrong. But uh, anyways, we're gonna give it a shot and see if it works. Next time I go up, I should have a power supply and uh, hopefully that's all it is. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna let you go because I gotta drive, so take care. We'll see you in the next video.